Inside this small Brownsburg warehouse, it's clear looks can be deceiving. This is what we call a pilot plant. At first glance, the manufacturing may look more like an art project, but Bill Simpson says every part of his new football helmet is state of the art. I'm starting off with it being way better than anything that's on the market, and I know that. And Simpson knows a lot about safety equipment. As a safety pioneer in motorsports, he built successful companies by putting his faith in new materials. I'm going to go until I get warm. Often deceiving the eyes in the process. I have never before called such a, an exhibition in motorsports. And now he's doing the same in a new sport. How do you feel right now? Now I'm a little nervous because you're photographing this, and that's not ever been done before and my test lab. For the first time in front of our cameras, he's about to have safety experts put his work to the test. But before we see the results, we look at why this helmet is so important. Oh, Collie is down again. Austin Collie and other NFL players suffering concussions from violent hits live on TV generate the most attention. But these players are actually better protected than these ones. Concussions were something that surprised us. Becky Brooks didn't anticipate concussions being a problem until her young boys were older, but that changed quickly. Both of our boys had concussions in the same year, a few months apart last year. Hits to the head on average are less frequent and less severe in youth football, but concussions still happen. And this is where the vast majority of football players are. An estimated 3.5 million kids take part in youth football across the country. That's more than the NFL, college, and high school combined. We get more questions on a daily basis now than we ever have concerning concussions. The president of Center Grove Bantam Football says participation in leagues and tournaments like these across Indiana and the country is falling as concern about concussions is rising. We think football is under attack right now. Though Becky remains a fan, she educated herself and her boys about concussion symptoms and safety, even opting to pay extra for a special helmet for her boys. A helmet is the best protection for their head and their brain. There's just one big problem. To my knowledge, there's not a, a well-fitting, uh, well-designed helmet for young kids that play football. Dr. Steve Olvey is a professor of neurology at the University of Miami. His 2006 study found that children, even up to ages 16 or 17, have skulls and necks that are so different from adults, they require helmets that are designed differently and weigh significantly less. Dr. Olvey's research led to new youth standards for racing helmets, but six years later, there's still no standard for youth football. The problem is that many of the helmets uh, used nowadays are, are actually too heavy and they don't fit properly. Uh, you can not just downsize an adult helmet and make it for kids and say it's okay for kids. These little kids shouldn't be wearing something that weighs five pounds on their head. Bill Simpson is already busy mass producing this ultralight adult helmet with the help of his business partner, Indy car owner Chip Ganassi. The helmet debuted in the NFL last season and will begin shipping to colleges and high schools in time for next season. But now he's going even further. There's no differentiation for me to the mega star that's playing NFL football versus the little kid that's playing in Pop Warner. Simpson's new prototype youth helmet is designed with a child's head in mind, from the lighter titanium face mask to these raised ridges. There's some material in there that absorbs the initial impact before it gets anywhere as close to the liner. And speaking of the liner, looks are again deceiving. The biggest issue that I have right now is parents saying to me, this looks like a styrofoam piece. It's not styrofoam, it's space age. For now, Simpson can only say it's a new combination of three materials because he has several patents still pending. That was styrofoam and I did that and I removed my thumb, there would be a big dent in it. The performance speaks for itself. Simpson's helmet certainly does outperform the others when it comes to weight. For example, most youth helmets weigh in at just over four pounds. But the Simpson SGH helmet, when we put that on the scale, you'll see it comes in at one pound, 15 ounces. But these aren't the only numbers that are important. We never dropped a little kid's helmet before. This box here is what's collecting all the data. Evan Breedlove studies helmet safety at Purdue University and also consults for SGH. When he drops a helmet, this machine tracks the G-forces inside the head, along with something called severity index. The better the helmet does, the lower both numbers are. Bringing down any of those numbers is a good thing. Um, the question is just, how good? First, Evan tested the main competitor currently on the market, the Riddell Speed Youth Helmet. After two drops, it registered an average severity index of 734 and 101 Gs. 
Now, the moment of truth for Simpson's work, live in front of our cameras. <laughs> we don't know what this thing's going to do, but we think we know what it's going to do. We'll, but we'll see here in a second, won't we? Remember, the lower the numbers, the better, with the big competing helmet on the market registering 734 and 101. Yeah, I would say it's a little better, wouldn't you? 305. After averaging the two tests, the SGH helmet registered a severity index of 340 and 58 Gs, cutting the scores of its competition in half. Is that twice as good? <laughs> numbers don't lie. And right now, the numbers say this safety pioneer is leading the way again. There's light at the end of the tunnel and getting uh, really good helmets for kids that play uh, youth football. All these little kids getting concussions, I'm just hoping that it'll, it will minimize that. You know, we don't know. Let's get it out in the field. And that's exactly what he's beginning to do. It's a big difference. Yeah. I can't feel it. Giving parents and kids in central Indiana the first chance to see it and feel it up close. As I told Mr. Simpson, I said, you know, you realize you're, you're probably getting ready to revolutionize a sport that's kind of on attack right now. To those who may be skeptical of the funny looking helmet from the small company, Holt wants to remind them, looks can be deceiving. You see Rick Mears as a little kid growing up and going into a, a wall on, on, at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and walking away without any problems. And then you compare it to a kid out here getting hit. Uh, I think the guy kind of knows what he's talking about. The scores you just saw in that drop test both easily passed the current standards for helmets. Now we want to point out that this was just a very small comparison between the two helmets, but Finch and Simpson says he's very excited, obviously, about yeah. these results so far, and he's going to try to improve them even more. You know, we have a lot of parents watching right now, and I know they're probably asking two questions. One, where can I get this helmet, and how much does it cost? We can find out more about the helmet online for now. They're trying to expand that from here on out, yeah. but for now, look online, go to events if they are showing it somewhere. The cost is going to be a barrier for some. It's about $400 wow. according to the website. That is a lot. Um, they're offering it for discounts in some places, but for now they're trying to figure out bulk pricing and other information. We've gone ahead and listed all that information online. Look for this story on fox59.com under the link section.